Hello everyone. Sorry I haven't posted in a while. I've been really busy. I've been doing um, a couple of albums for some production libraries. Um, one thing I do want to look at quite soon is deconstructing a mix. So we'll take one of my mixes and we'll deconstruct it and we'll look at um, different things. I use production techniques and that sort of stuff. But today, just to get the ball rolling again, I wanted to look at changing strings. I quite often talk to people about guitar strings that have trouble changing strings and it's a relatively simple job. So it's something you definitely can do. Now, the first things first, when you've got a guitar, is work out what kind of guitar you've got, because it can alter the way you change the strings. This is a, um, based on a Fender Strat, it's a Squire Strat, but it's a, basically a standard guitar we're going to use. And this is a guitar we're going to use today, because it's probably the most common design. And you have a ball of a string which fits down the back, and that's what we're going to look at. But you can also get one of these, oh, pull the stand off, which is um, a Floyd Rose system, where you actually have a clamp system with this. So if you've got a Floyd Rose guitar, and like an Ibanez, a Jackson, something like that, that's got this kind of style thing with the fine tuners down the back, it's a different way of changing strings, but we're gonna look at that as well. Okay, but let's get on with the standard strat changing. So first things first is work out what gauge of string you've got on your guitar. If you don't know the gauge of string you've got on there, 9 to 42 is really, I suppose, the industry standard. That's what most guitar come, come when you get them from the factory, that's what they've got. And it's the gauge from the 9, it's 0.9 of a millimetre here, to the thinnest E string, to 0.42 over here. So it's point, sorry, it's 0.009 of a millimetre to 0.042 of a mil here, so as it gets thicker. Not the most exciting thing, but you can get tens. They and what the way they gauge guitar strings are from the thinnest string. So if someone was to say, "What gauge strings have you got?" Chances are they're probably nines, but you can get tens and you can get elevens. On acoustic guitars, they go up to sort of fourteens. You can go up to, and obviously as they go up, that's the thicker string. So I've got nines on here. I know I've got nines. So the standard set of strings. But what we're going to need to change our strings? We're going to need a set of strings. <laughs> Thank you, so we've got a set of strings, and I've got here Diodario, it doesn't really matter what you use, I use Rotor Sound as well, but I know some people are really finickety about the kind of strings that they use, but I don't really give a monk as long as they're a reasonable brand, that'll be fine. Okay, so I've got a set of strings, there's six strings in here, I'm going to need some pliers, <laughs> wicked, um, a cloth. I'm going to turn my amp off. And just some polish. Now, if you've got a really expensive guitar, it might be worth getting actually specialist guitar cleaners. You can get them, most manufacturers make them, but I'm using um, a multi surface cleaner, which guitar technicians, whoever watching this, will probably go mad at me doing this. But I've got a maple fretboard, so it's not a rosewood, it's not the darker wood, so therefore, this has been, it's got a lacquer on it anyway, so the, it's just going to give it a bit of a clean. Okay, on to changing the strings. So we're going to take these strings off first. Now, what most people recommend is you take one or two strings off at a time and then clean it up, put those strings on, take the next two strings off or the next string, clean the fretboard up, and so on. Now, you can just take all your strings off, but what they people say that it can cause a shock on the truss rod, which is a metal bit of a rod going through the, through the neck. I, to be honest, you can just take all these strings off, but we're going to do it the correct way by taking a couple of strings off at a time. You can get string winders to speed this up. Now, by turning the machine head down or towards me, so lefty loosey and righty tighty, remember that. It's quite useful. So I'm just going to turn this towards me, and that's loosened my string off. I can then unwind it off the tuning post itself pull it through and on a machine head or the tuning peg you've got a little hole and that's where we're going to put the string through. So I've taken that off now, I'm going to feed it hopefully through the back. Now these strings have been on for a while so they can get stuck and that has I think, yes it has. So we're going to get something, can you see there, that's got stuck in there, I'm going to get something to poke it through. Now, when you buy a guitar, if you bought a guitar new, you get a tiny little allen key for changing the height of the strings. That's ideal for poking it through. That's what I'm going to try and find now. Okay, I found a little pokey tool, so 
just going to push him down there because you know that was stuck fast in there. That doesn't want to move. Something small enough to fit down there. Just give it a slight push. And we've got movement so we can pull him through. Now, another real quick tip, which is, you know, does work if you're sort of before a gig or something and a string's broken and it's got stuck in there. Here's a quick tip. You've taken the string off, he's stuck. Cut the string in half. Use the bit you've cut off as your pokey tool. Poke him through. That's a little trick for you. And then pull him out. We're now missing a string. I'm just going to do that with the A string really quick. Sense people use a string winder, but there you go. Why make life more easy for yourself? Okay. So, again, I've unwound it. Got my string here. And he's stuck. Again, that one's stuck in there. Let's use my half string I've tried. Let's try if that works. Bit of a poke through. Job done. So now I've got two strings free. I can now use my cloth, clean all of the gunk out from under the strings, give it all a bit of a clean. Obviously, if you if you want to get a toothbrush or something in there to get in between all those little cavities, you can do that. And we're just doing a quick clean through here. Bit of furniture polish or a bit of polish, something that won't affect. Make sure it's not anything too abrasive or anything that's going to affect the guitar and then just on those two making sure he's had a quick clean. I haven't I change strings rel um, relatively often so it doesn't need a massive amount of clean. You can find at this stage if you take all your strings off and you've got the odd fret that sticks out here is a bit sharp when you play if you use masking tape and mask off the guitar just so the frets are exposed you can actually some people, I've seen people use a nail file for this, but I think really fine wet and dry paper you can just sand off any edges that are too much, but be careful with that. It's really worth, if you've got that kind of issue, unless you're really confident about it, going to a guitar technician and they'll do that for you. Okay, so we've got the two strings. They're off, we're going to put them back on. So let's do it the opposite way. So we've taken the strings off, we're now going to put the two strings back on. Okay, here's my strings. These are quite cool because it's actually told me they've got their colour coordinated. It's telling me the brass ones, the E, the sixth, so the thickest. We've got red, black, green, purple, and silver as we go. So it's giving me an idea of the actual string for on the ball of the string, which is great. Okay, so we'll open them up. I'll keep that as a reference and try not to drop them. That's a good start. Okay, I don't know where that went, but oh, there we go. That's great. So, got brass was my thick E string. I'm gonna. They generally come wound. Take care not to put too much of a bend. I was quite careful the way I opened that roll. Then, if you put a bend in the string, accidentally, when you tighten it up, even though you can't even see where the bend was, it can affect the intonation, and that means the tuning as you go up and down the fretboard can be changed. So, try and keep your strings as straight as possible. Okay, we know how we did it before. We got the string from the back of the guitar, so we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to feed it through the back, and because it's the thickest string, it's the one here, the first away from us there, so we've got the guitar upside down. We're going to poke it through until it comes through, and it will come through here, the hole here. Sometimes, if you've got your guitar, the intonation set, so they can sometimes get caught, so you've got to be careful here. You can give this a bit of a wiggle until this comes out. We're going to feed it all the way through, pull it just to make sure it's, it seats itself into that back area because sometimes, I have seen this and this thing to watch, they can get caught here or even at the side of the trem and then when you tighten it up you think you're tightening it up and all of a sudden the string goes because it seats itself. So make sure it's sitting in there properly, pull it through and remember what we said about the tuning peg here the tuning peg has a hole in it. Feed it through the hole. Okay, this is where this is where it gets interesting. We want to, when we turn this, we're going to obviously turn it right. The machine had righty tighty to tighten the um, tighten the string up. But if you if you did that with no slack on this string here, 
you're only going to get half a turn and you're going to be in tune. And the problem with that is it needs a couple of turns on the actual peg itself in order to keep the friction of the string on there. So we want to make sure we've got a relatively good amount of string before we tighten it. And this is where I use my hand as a gauge. I know here if I start tightening away from myself, I've got a good few turns on that. But, right, I might zoom in for this bit. Sorry, Frog, I'm going to move you. Okay, I'm going to zoom in for this bit because this is quite interesting. Okay, when I say we're zooming in, <laughs> we can't work out to use the zoom on the camera, so we brought the camera closer. Okay, now what some people do, make sure you've got enough slack in here, simply right turn away, righty tighty, make sure the string goes underneath as he goes round, get a few turns on there and the job's good and it will stick. But this is a little top tip that, I, um, that I've learnt off someone, is actually to bring the string through the string hole, start to do a bit of a turn round so he actually locks in there. Remember we've still got this slack on the string. Then keep the tension on there and then with this string bring him back round. So the opposite way, feed it under, just a little bit. Takes a bit of getting used to this, but so he's gone round the opposite way to the string. I'm keeping a bit of tension there. Lift him up, hold there, it's tight and round. It doesn't look the bait, it can look a bit ugly this. Well, he doesn't want the strings cut. Give it a bit of a turn. Do you see what that's done? It's kind of made almost a a lock of its own. So now, I know when I tighten this string up now, that actually, where is he? Is that focusing in? That can't go anywhere now because he's stuck in there. It's moved up. Okay, we're just going to run that with the A string because um, I'm not sure it was completely in focus. Sorry, I'm having a bit of trouble with the camera. But okay, so, but just to finish the E off. I've still got this really long bit of string. They give you a long bit of string because of different lengths of guitar necks and different um, tuning pegs and stuff like that. So, I'm just going to cut this off. So, using just some standard pliers or snips, I'm just going to go hold it at the top of where the tuning peg is, so the actual stuff of the tuning peg. Make sure you don't obviously cut the string through because I have done that before, very embarrassing. <laughs> so, snip him off. He'll come away. Now, they're quite sharp after you've cut a guitar string. This is my other little tip. You see this sticking up here? Again, using the pliers, just push him down slightly. Careful not to, obviously, if you push too hard, you're gonna slip through and perhaps damage the lacquer of the neck. But you see here, I've pushed it down, and therefore, when I pick my guitar up, or for anyone who picks the guitar up, that string is not sticking out, so it's not gonna, jab them. So that's going down now, facing downwards. Okay, let's do that with the A string really quick. Yeah, I don't want to be... Okay, so again it goes through the ball at the back, the ball goes through the back, locks in, making sure that it's seated in the back. Okay, feed it through the, ball, the hole in the tuning peg itself, and again, make sure, remember, you've got to keep that slack in the string, so you can use your hand to slack, Give it a few turns away from yourself, so righty tighty. And remember this, we did it, kept the tension on there. Bring the string underneath. If you're worried about this bit, you can just do the, as long as you've got a good few turns on there, it'll be fine. Okay, so the string's gone underneath. I'm gonna lift, up, lift it up slightly so we're going underneath. Start my turning. Because of this system, that lock that we're doing, that sort of when you turn back on itself and go underneath, you don't need that many turns because it can't go anywhere. The string actually cannot move once it's under that pressure. The tension, it can't move. So just turn it away from myself again. A few turns. And we're just about we're nearly there. And then what I'll do, I'll just do the rest of the strings. So rather than bore you with that. So again, remember, once you've got the string through the hole, keep the hand 
on the guitar neck, bring the string over the top, give it a bit of a turn so it starts to take, starts to bite, bring the string back round, the loose bit of string, back round the opposite way, feed it underneath the string, keep the tension on there, pull it round, and it actually makes a little lock so it can't go anywhere and that's really secure now and then again remember while well, the string's upright hold it just above the tuning peg snip him off ouch ouch sharp get rid of that by using the pliers push him down not sharp anymore okay I'll just do the rest of the strings okay I just really want to just reiterate on this and do the one more string so we're going to look at the D string so again, it's gone through. It's gone through the back. It's seated properly in the trim. I've gone through the hole in the tuning peg itself. Now, these are more interesting. On a lot of guitars, you get these little string guides. So, before we fully tighten the string, we need to put it under this string guide. But we're not going to worry about that at the moment. Okay, so it's gone through the hole. I'm making sure my hand's in place. The string's gone over the top, so I've got a good few turns. Now, this is the bit we've got to get. Right, so we turn away from ourselves, righty-tighty, to put the pressure of the string on. So now, as you, right, as you tighten that string, you can actually feel it bite. This is the key here. Our loose bit of string, the other side, we turn back the opposite way, feed it round, under the string, and over the top. So, let me show you again. That's our string. It goes round the opposite way, under the string, pull it up over the top. It kind of makes a tiny little, it's not a knot because it's, it's just using the hole of the tuning peg so it can't slip. It's kind of like a knot. Okay. And again, we don't need that many turns. Three turns, well not turns, three actual rotations, so I've got just two on that one. It's going to be fine because the string can't go anywhere because of that way we've done it. Then cut the ball off, cut, not the ball, the, this, the end bit of the string. Don't cut the ball off and then the string will come off, but the end bit of the string and job's a good one. Okay, I'll just do the rest of the strings. Turny, 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 and then we're nearly ready to go. Okay, that's it. So we've got what? just done all of the strings. I've put them through the holes. Did that sort of locking system that we discussed by bringing the string round. I've pressed all of these end bits so they're facing downwards, so no one's going to get a little poke from the strings. Next thing to do is tune your guitar up. Now, all guitars, because I want to explain this with nylon strings. Um, a folk guitar, so steel string, and a Floyd Rose system as well. They're all different, but one thing they have got in common is they all need a bit of a stretch in because there's always a bit of a give on a string when you get them. So if you didn't do this sort of stretch in, what would happen is you'd, you'd tune up one string, start playing, and then within seconds you'd notice it's lowered in pitch because the string's stretching. So I'm not putting much force in there, but I'm giving them a little bit of a stretch, which is just moving it from left to right. Also, what the that does, if, if one of these isn't seated properly, the ball, by doing that, it generally just shifts them around so they seat. Now, we're going to use a tuner, tune them up, and then we're just going to do it one more stretch in. So, remembering our string names, I've got an E. Oh, have I got that running through there? Here we go. Sorry. So, my thickest string is an E, second thickest string is an A, then we've got a D next, sorry, going the wrong way. A slightly sharp there, I had too much tension on the string, which isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as it's not a huge amount, because that helps stretch the string in as well. So then we've got a G, a B, Ooh. think you're going too tight, if you can sort of sense it, the string will snap. 
take it down. Don't go so far that the string's going to snap. If you feel uncomfortable with that, it's generally for a reason. You don't want you to snap your new string. Okay, and you see what I'm doing there? Just going through it one more time. A little bit, not too much tension. I don't want to rip the string out. And then again, E, A, D, G, B, E. Eddie ate dynamite. Goodbye, Eddie is a good way of remembering your strings. So, here's good. G, bye, Eddie. Okay, that's roughly in tune. Once they're in, I just go around the fretboard, give them a bit of a bend. Oh, you could hear that. That's for the string just seating itself into the top note, I think that was then. Okay. And again, quick tune up. Play through your favourite track, tune them up again, and the chances are, because you've done that bending the string in, it shouldn't move that much. Take about a day for really to settle down completely, but that's it, that's how you change your strings. What we're gonna look at, so we'll look at all the guitar um, types changing strings, but then another thing I do want to come and talk about sometimes, what we could do with this truss rod, how we're going to set this, the action on the guitar, and down here the string height, and also here the intonation. The intonation is, if you play further up the fretboard, make sure your guitar doesn't go out of tune, and we can do that by setting distances between the 12th fret, but we're going to look at that in a different video. Okay, good luck with your strings.